Hi, welcome to valuationpodcast.com, a podcast and video series about all things related to business and valuation. My name is Melissa Gregg, and I provide online divorce mediation and valuation services in St. Louis, Missouri. Today, we will discuss insight into dental market transactions with Maria Malone. Maria is a leading M&A advisor to the dental industry and an investment banker in Chicago, Illinois, with a mission to help both individual dentists and dental groups navigate the complex landscape of dental practice transactions. Maria is the managing director at Caber Hill Advisors, also located in Chicago, Illinois. You just kind of spoke about it, but you basically worked for a company that was purchasing um, a bunch, uh, you know, a publicly held company that was purchasing dental practices. And I think this is, a, you know, like, I know that this is what everybody likes to know, you know, is there a rule of thumb or a valuation multiple on how a dental practice is priced or worth? But I think if we if we take that one step further and we look at it from the private equity perspective, right? Because, you know, are th are there multiples? And I'll caveat it, being a valuation professional by saying that these multiples can change every day and they are averages and they're just like, you know, nobody should really, really consider them, but everybody wants to know. Now, do private equity, do they have some current kind of ways that they're looking at practices and kind of pricing them? Um, maybe that's helpful insight to a dental, uh, a, a dentist at this point. Yeah. I mean, the way I think about it is sort of in groupings, um, you know, and again, this is very, very broad brushed um, there, you know, as we touched on earlier, there's so many factors um, and we didn't even go into all the factors. I just mentioned a few <laughs> highlights of things that we look at when we're looking at what is the real value of this business. But, um, you know, in a, in a broad brush, I would say, you know, your typical solo practitioner, probably three to five times EBITDA. Um, if you're a single location with multiple doctors or maybe your one to three offices, you know, four and a half to six times. Um, if you're, you know, anywhere from three to 10 locations, you know, you're probably six to eight times. Um, if you've got a, a robust or a strong um, historical growth trend, with a robust pipeline for growth, whether that's through acquisition or opening new offices, you know, then you're probably getting to the eight to 10. And then, you know, to really get over a 10 times, you've got to have the growth, you've got to have the doctor retention, and you've got to have a team in place that can, can help the business continue to grow even further. Um, and again, that's, that's also just very broad brush. And, you know, we certainly see, I mean, I just heard, I guess, right before Thanksgiving of a group, a large group that um, offered eight and a half times on a solo practitioner, you know, in Western Massachusetts, which is a, you know, seems like a very crazy um, multiple to pay on, on that type of office. But, um, you know, I think that that group is probably about to have their own liquidity event. And so mm -hmm. they're probably just trying to get some more revenue, um, right. you know, under them as they, they think about their, their next process.